Good morning. My name is Deborah Hyde. Um, I'm a resident of Chattanooga for the last five years, and my only son, Luca, has Down syndrome. And so we have uh, spent the last five years working with Hamilton County. And I've learned a lot about um, the treatment of individuals with intellectual disabilities in the state of Tennessee during that time, and I would like to share some of that information with the commission. In 1975, Congress enacted the Education of All Handicapped Children Act to support the states and localities in pr uh, protecting the rights of, meeting the individual needs of, and improving the developmental and educational outcomes of infants, toddlers, and children and youth with disabilities. In 1970, before this legislation was enacted, almost 20% of students with disabilities, or one in five school-aged children with disabilities, were permitted in public schools. So four out of five were at home. They were not allowed in public schools. After 40 years of strengthening what is now known as the Individuals with Intellectual, I'm sorry, Individual, Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, or the IDEA, the state of Tennessee has made virtually no progress in the educational opportunities and outcomes of students with intellectual disabilities. Per the Tennessee Department of Education, there are almost 113,000 students with disabilities in the state of Tennessee as of 2012. Of those students, approximately 6.5% are students with intellectual disabilities. Each year, public schools in the state of Tennessee segregate students with intellectual disabilities away from non-disabled peers and deny them access to state-approved general education curriculum that is available to all other public school students. Of the 72,000 students with disabilities who are in the regular education setting, 80% or more of each day, only 1.4% are students with intellectual disabilities. Of the students with disabilities in Tennessee public schools who are segregated, 33% of them are students with intellectual disabilities. This is twice the segregation rate of students in all other disability categories except students with multiple disabilities. So in other words, students with intellectual disabilities are only 6.5% of the total population of students with disabilities, but they represent 33% of students who are segregated from non-disabled peers in settings where they are denied access to a state-approved general education curriculum. Hamilton County Schools here in Chattanooga and Knox County Schools in Knoxville segregate more than 80% of students with intellectual disabilities from the regular education classroom, denying them interaction with non-disabled peers, denying them access to the general education curriculum, and denying them any educational programming that gives them an opportunity for a regular high school diploma. This segregation of 80% plus of students with intellectual disabilities is almost twice the national average of 48% of students with intellectual disabilities in segregated settings. How is this discrimination allowed to continue? I believe there are three main reasons. First, the Tennessee Department of Education turns a blind eye to the discrimination. It aggregates data from all Tennessee school systems, hiding the disproportionality of school systems with high rates of segregation of students with intellectual disabilities or who fall into specific disability classifications. While it admits that many of Tennessee's largest school systems segregate students with intellectual disabilities at twice the rate of the national average, it claims that the decisions that lead to the segregation are based solely on the students' individual needs. However, which of these students do not require an education that leads to further education, employment, and independent living? In reality, there is virtually a 0% probability that this segregation is based on individual needs. A simple statistical test called a p-value of probability proves that the probability of segregating students with intellectual disability at twice the rate of the national average while making individualized decisions based on individual student needs is in fact almost 0%. It simply is not possible. However, if the Tennessee Department of Education admits that certain school systems have an unspoken policy of segregating students with intellectual disabilities from the regular education classroom and away from non-disabled peers, it will have to require these systems to change. 
The second reason that discrimination against students with intellectual disabilities continues in the state of Tennessee is because the principals at individual schools have ultimate control over the schools. If they want to move students with intellectual disabilities out of their school, they can. If they don't want to hire teachers who have a training and experience in providing inclusive educational strategies to students with intellectual disabilities in the regular classroom, they don't have to. If a principal doesn't want a teacher to provide a particular student with the supports he or she needs to allow the student to progress in the way the, the teacher knows the student can, the principal simply stops them. And even if these actions violate the Federal Individuals with Disabilities Education Act or the Americans with Disabilities Act, they can get away with it because the central administration of the school system will support them. Why? Because of the third reason that the state of Tennessee continues to discriminate against students with intellectual disabilities. The school systems know that the only option that the parents have is to file suit against the school system. And that's it. There is no objective agency with knowledge and experience in implementing educational requirements in the, um, of the indiv in individuals with intellectual disabilities that parents can turn to. None of the agencies in Tennessee that support families of children with uh, developmental disabilities or intellectual disabilities gets involved in these kinds of educational decisions, anything that has any legal interpretation of the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act. In the state of Tennessee, less than one IDEA due process case is heard each year, simply because it is too difficult and too expensive for the average family to fight the school system. Mm. Hamilton County alone has an over $5 million fund to fight parents who might file suit trying to get a real education for their child with a disability. The school systems know that they have complete control over the student's records and all of the student's outcomes and all of the people involved in the educational process and possess multi-million dollar funds of taxpayer money to fight the parents. So there is no motivation to follow the law. Now, why should this matter to you and to other citizens of the state of Tennessee? In 2013, the Tennessee State Legislature documented that approximately 31,000 students age out of Tennessee high schools with no diploma and no schools that allow them to seek further education, employment, or independent living. Of those 31,000 students, approximately half are students with disabilities who are placed in segregated settings with no real uh, educational expectations. 25% of those students are students with intellectual disabilities. This means that over 7,300 students with intellectual disabilities may now be dependents of the state who will need food assistance, housing assistance, transportation, vocational training, and medical assistance, sometimes for 50 years or more. If the 7,300 students with intellectual disabilities in Tennessee were placed in another state with inclusion rates closer to the national average, over 3,500 of these exact same students would be educated with non-disabled peers, and they'd have a chance to earn a high school diploma. These 3,500 students could graduate and go on to attend any of the 26 post-secondary college programs that exist in the nation. They would have an equal opportunity for further education, employment, and independent living that should have been guaranteed to them almost 40 years ago by federal law. The latest reauthorization of the Individuals with Disabilities Education Improvement Act of 2004 begins with the following findings of Congress. And I'll try not to cry, this language is very beautiful. <clears throat> Disability is a natural part of the human experience and in no way diminishes the right of individuals to participate in or contribute to society. Improving educational results for children with disabilities is an essential element of our national policy of ensuring <coughs> equality of opportunity, full participation, independent living, and economic self-sufficiency for individuals with disabilities. Almost 30 years of research and experience has demonstrated that the education of children with disabilities can be made more effective by having high expectations of such children and ensuring their access to the general education curriculum in the regular classroom to the maximum extent possible in order to meet developmental goals and to the maximum extent possible the challenging expectations that have been established for all children. 
and to be prepared to lead productive and independent adult lives to the maximum extent possible. That, of course, is what all parents want for their children. This is what all states want for its citizens. This is the equal opportunity guaranteed to all students, including students with disabilities and students with intellectual disabilities. What will it take for the state of Tennessee to stop discriminating against its students with intellectual disabilities? Thank you. I do. I'd like to know, um, you mentioned the due process issues. Do you know of other states and jurisdictions that may have due process issues in place or due process programs for parents and or others respect to intellectual disability? Yes, under the Federal <coughs> Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, there is a complete due process established that involves um, mediation or dispute resolution as part of it, which um, a parent who has an issue with the school can go through. Um, and it is a required step in the process. However, once again, it's somewhat controlled by the school system. Um, the school system is the one who pays the mediators. Um, they're the ones that can come with an attorney. Could you um, turn that mic so that we can hear what I you're apologize. saying? I apologize, yes, sir. Um, all states are, uh, are subject to the Federal Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, and that whole process has a due process um, as part of its whole procedures that all families can take advantage of. Um, again, the primary challenge is that the school has the ultimate resources. They have all of your child's records. They have control over all of the educators, so it's extremely hard to get an unbiased professional educator who's been involved in your child's education to say something other than whatever the school system's position is. Uh, but that is allowed in, in the whole process. And I guess the other question is, do we have a view of the diversity of students, where they come from, who they are, that are, that are intellectually disabled in Tennessee? I mean, is there statistics about, are they from rural communities, are they from urban communities, are they more female, more African American, or is it, and is that information available? It is, it is uh, very widely available. Um, it's part of the required reporting under the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act in order for school systems to get funding. Um, I did a simple request with the Tennessee Department of Education. They broke it down by county and by disability category. I did not ask further in terms of um, gender or race, but I'm sure that information is widely available as well. No, I don't think so. 